everyone, Rosie here. Welcome back to my channel. This week's video is going to be a wrap up of everything I read in July, which if you saw my finish-a-thon reading vlog from last week, you'll have heard about a lot of these already, but hopefully this video will give a little bit more detailed review. I'm trying to work on that, so fingers crossed. The first book I finished in July is 21 Things You Might Not Know About the Indian Act by Bob Joseph, which as the title suggests, is about the Indian Act, the piece of legislation which governs the relationship between the government of Canada and Indigenous peoples in Canada. So this is a great book to read if you don't know that much about that piece of legis legislation, or realizing that, you want to know a bit more. Um, as I think I've mentioned before, I'm Canadian. It's something that I'm realizing more and more how little I know about this topic, about the treatment of Indigenous peoples in Canada in general. So it's something I'm working on reading more about to, I guess, fill in the gaps that I didn't cover in school. This book isn't an easy read in that the subject matter is really heavy, but it's also very readable. And I think I've mentioned that about a book before recently, but it just really applies to this. It's quick, it's short, it's not super dense. So even though the material is quite important and serious, it's not a book that you're really going to struggle through. So to wrap that up, it was great. I read it in like the span of a day or two. It was really good and highly recommend if that's a topic that you're also realizing you don't know that much about. The next book I finished in July, which I actually only just finished last week because I didn't really finish much throughout July until my finish-a-thon vlog, uh, is Valhalla by Tom Holt, which the premise of this book is that heaven, Valhalla, the afterlife, whatever you would like to call it, is run by a massive corporation and there's many different afterlives that people go to. So this book sees two and then more individuals end up in these various afterlives and explores their struggle to get out. Uh, they both feel like they're there for the wrong reasons or that they shouldn't be there yet and they're trying to escape afterlife. And unfortunately, I just didn't love this book as a whole. It had great scenes. The opening is beautiful. We open with all sorts of military leaders, good and bad. We've got Hitler and also Joan of Arc and they're all just sitting in a massive amphitheater watching paint dry. And so I read that and I was going, this sounds so cool, this sounds great, where's this gonna go from here? And unfortunately I just found that there wasn't enough plot. There were individual scenes that were really fun and there were individual scenes that I really enjoyed, but on the whole it just wasn't a book that pulled me in and made me want to read more because on one hand I didn't find that there was much character development, but on the other hand I couldn't really tell what was happening or if there was a plot so it was just sort of disappointing in that. I didn't hate it, but it just also wasn't very good, unfortunately, because this is, I think, the third or fourth Tom Holt book that I've read that I felt like this about. For different reasons, I think, but every time I read one of his books, I just go, I thought this was going to be better. I had high hopes for this, and they just don't meet them, unfortunately. The next book I finished was Evening in Paradise by Lucia Berlin, which is a collection of short stories, and I think the way they were described by either her or her son, I can't remember who it was, is that they're, they're not autobiographical, but they're all true. And I raved about these in my finish -a vlog, I'm going to keep raving about them now. I think they're beautiful. I only discovered Lucia Berlin earlier this year, and I'm already such a huge fan. They're just such wonderful stories. Every single time I read one. I start reading and I'm a couple pages in and going, wow, this is delightful. Um, and it just keeps growing and growing. And I find her writing has such a hyper reality to it. It's almost as if you took reality as we experience it and just turned the vibrancy up and it just is even more real, even more intense. They're gorgeous. I can't recommend them enough. The next book I finished was unfortunately another dud for me, and that was Modifié by Sébastien Chauzu, which, big disclaimer, I read this book in French. 
and I think if I had read it in English and understood more, I might feel better about it. But I think because I read it in my second language, I just missed a lot of the tone, I missed a lot of the atmosphere, the jokes side of it. So I just didn't enjoy it. And to make matters worse, I just found it really hard to get into because for the first fifth or so of the book, as far as I could tell, basically we were just reading about the narrator and main character, it's a middle-aged woman, going around being horrible to everyone she encounters. And later in the book we see a different side of her and we see how her husband and her stepdaughter aren't so great themselves, but for the first sort of fifth of the book I was just, I kept going, you'll never believe what this woman has done to her lovely husband now. My god, she's done what to her stepdaughter? What's going on here? It just didn't really grab my attention. I think it's supposed to be a character-driven story, but maybe, I don't know if because of the writing or because of my reading of it, I didn't really get the character side. Then there wasn't like a huge plot driving it through, where there were plot points that I was getting, I was like, what, what's happening? Um, so unfortunately I didn't like it that much. Um, if any of you have read it or plan on reading it, I highly encourage you to and let me know. Let me know if this is just a language issue or if it's not a great book. Um, one thing I did find really fun though is it's set in New Brunswick, which is the province that I'm from, and <laughs> oh man, so I don't know if it would be this funny to people who aren't familiar with New Brunswick or the Maritimes in general, but the family that this woman is from and like the entire situation is so comically like we've changed this name just enough to not get sued and I don't know if that helped or hurt it in my view. Maybe it would have been funnier if I wasn't in the back of my head seeing them as real people. Maybe it would have been funnier if I'd just seen them as characters but because everything the author describes about this family is so true to life it was just a bit odd. Now the last three books in this wrap-up I technically finished in August because I finished them Saturday the 1st or Sunday the 2nd of August, but I read most of them in July so I'm counting them in my July wrap-up. And first of those is A London Year by, I keep forgetting the authors, they'll be in the down below bar thing, um, which is a collection of diary entries or letter excerpts about people or by people and about London throughout time. I think the earliest ones are like the 1540s maybe and they come up to whenever the book was compiled, compiled basically. I had started that, well I know I started it since I moved into this apartment, which was two years ago. So at some point in the last two years I started this book, I finished it for the finish-a-thon. It was really fun. I think it's not necessarily everyone's cup of tea because there's no plot, there's no overarching theme, there's nothing driving it forward. It's just like, you know, January 1st. Here's some diary entries from January 1st written by people who were in London. January 2nd. But I found it really interesting. It was so cool getting these little snippets into people's lives throughout time and hearing about what they thought was worth writing down. So. I found it delightful. I'm sure it would be wonderful to keep on your coffee table or I don't know, some random place where you want to sit and pick something up for like five minutes because you can very easily pick this up, put it down, read a segment, read a chapter, like you don't miss anything if you put it down for six months as I did. Um, so that was really fun. I don't, it, it's sort of a weird book to evaluate like that though or to review because it's so what exactly is it? I don't know. How do you compare it to anything? <laughs> the next book I finished was The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien, which I think is a great book if you know what to expect. If you've read Lord of the Rings and you expect Lord of the Rings but in the first age, you're going to be really disappointed because it's not at all that same style of book. However, if you go in expecting a mythology, expecting it to span many thousands of years, have tons of characters, it's great. There's some beautiful chapters. Some of the chapters, especially at the beginning, I found very much dense and not so exciting to read. But some of the stories later, um, The Tale of Baron and Luthien, 
is just, I mean, so gorgeous and so wonderful. Um, and something I really recommend if you're interested in checking it out is the Prancing Pony podcast, which this is the second time I've read The Silver Moon. I should have said that earlier. Uh, I actually listened to the audiobook four years ago now, I think. Um, and I enjoyed it. It was enjoyable, but I didn't really process or like retain much. So this time I read a chapter and then I listened to the Prancing Pony podcast, which the podcast, they go through Tolkien's works chapter by chapter and discuss them and talk about where it fits into the greater mythology or the background behind Tolkien's writing it and just like actually analyzing what's going on. And I thought that was awesome. I definitely got a lot more out of it this time. I think in part because I was reading it for the second time, but largely because for every chapter I read, I would listen to often two to four hours of podcast, breaking it down and talking about it. So it gave my brain a lot more time to think about it, to really figure out where everything fit together, because I wouldn't just read something, not really get it, and then move on. Read something, not really get it, then it's all explained to you. So that was great, really enjoyable, and I think it's going to be a bit of a like whiplash when I switch into The Hobbit, which is the next one I'm going to read and listen to their podcast because it's such a different style of book. But The Silmarillion was great. And again, recommend if you're into that. Not a book for just anyone to pick up, but if you're into Tolkien, if you're into Lord of the Rings and you haven't read it, I really enjoyed it. The last book I finished was How to Plan a Crusade by Christopher Tyreman, which goes into sort of the nitty gritty of how the Crusades happened. Not just the justifications for why they happened, but actually how did they happen? How did these people get organized? How did they recruit? There's a whole chapter on how they budgeted and how they planned for their expenses over the course of their crusades, how they raised the money. It talks a lot about how things evolved throughout the crusades, because of course it was a period that spanned two, three hundred years. I should know it. I just read a book on it, but I'm bad at dates. Um, so it talks about how, you know, for example, oh, well, this ruler, monarch, crusade leader made this mistake, and then 50 years later, they tried to do this differently. It was really interesting. If you're interested in medieval history, military history, or even just history in general from a relatable sense, not just from a, I think I said in my TBR when I first mentioned this, names and dates. There's names and dates in this, obviously. You can't talk about history without that. But it's not a list of battles and who won. It talks more about, well, the everything behind that. And one thing that I really, really liked is, maybe this is just my nerdy economist heart here, but the author does a really good job of drawing from primary sources and talking about how those can be used and how we can interpret those also does a really good job of acknowledging when those primary sources are going to have biases in them. So for example, there's one section where it's talking about lawsuits and property disputes and how that related to crusaders because crusaders had certain privileges where basically I think you couldn't take them to court to take their property for debts while they were crusading. Um, so it talks about that, but then also acknowledges that that's going to give us a biased view of what was happening for Crusaders, because if you're a poor person, you don't have property that people are suing you for, and stuff like that. Um, he also does a very good job of breaking down some of the misogyny, I can't put it any other way, that people at the time had. So writers at the time tended to be very like critical of women for trying to persuade their husbands not to go on Crusades, and so being like, oh, these women, what are they doing? But the author goes into how, well, when a man went on a crusade, that left his wife and their and children in a vulnerable position. They were like, they weren't just being buzzkills for the sake of being buzzkills. They were saying, <laughs> honey, but if you go on a crusade, what happens to me? What is to stop someone from taking our property um, or trying to marry me because they say you're dead now? Um, I lose a lot of protection if you go away. So I thought that was really interesting. It was a really just interesting look at the Crusades, which wasn't a topic I'd been super interested in before seeing this book, but maybe that's because I'm more interested in how you mobilize tens of thousands of people than how tens of thousands of people kill each other on a battlefield. 
Um, so that's all the books I finished in July. It was on the whole a pretty good reading month, although like I said, most of those were finished within the last week, so hey, they got done! If you've read any of these, please let me know what you thought. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are there any you're interested in picking up? Let me know. Um, if you like this video, please hit thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe button down below. And thank you for watching!